Today, I'm gonna to be recapping some of my favorite gear at the 2020 NAMM show. Now, before I get started, I wanna let you know that I reached out to American Musical Supply to see if they would be interested in partnering up and doing some reviews, and so we have some videos coming that I'm very excited about. But more importantly, the link down below will take you to American Musical Supply so you can see all the gear I'm talking about today plus other gear. So make sure you put in the comments down below what gear you thought was most exciting either on this video or over at that link so I can reach out to them to see about doing other their videos. Now this is a company that you guys brought up to me last year on the podcast and I'm very excited about that because you guys mentioned your favorite thing was their payment plans and I did a review last year on the Charvel and we highlighted the payment plans and I think you guys seem to like that. So if you guys like that again put that in the comments. Let's get started though because there's a lot of gear to talk about. First of all I really was impressed with Epiphone this year. Obviously doing the new headstocks but the new colors we love to see Something we already love and proved. That's, that's always great. The Epiphone Tommy Thayer was fantastic. I love the electric blue, the fact that it comes with the case. I really love the vibe of it. I love the feel of it. It was fantastic. The other guitar that I thought stuck out for fun was the EVH Stripe Series Frankie. This is a made in Mexico for about $1,700. Keep in mind the first ones were retail $25,000. Obviously like this one's made in Mexico and it's not to that detail of that, but I think this is to try to give more players uh, that guitar. You know, for years, decades, players have been recreating this guitar, and it's nice to see it as an EVH branded product. Another guitar that I was really impressed with, of course, was the uh, the Gibson Slash Les Paul Standard. Again, I'm a Slash fan. To see the Slash guitars out there, uh, the whole selection, I just thought that was killer. Again, to see Gibson Epiphone kind of, not say stealing the show, but definitely making that show pop um, was nice. It's nice to see. The other thing I was really impressed with was the Lion 6 Pod Go. I was uh, lucky enough to sit with the Lion 6 guys and talk about this. And what I love about the Lion 6 Pod Go is uh, I've been messing with the Helix now for about a year. I really like the Helix, but it is uh, complicated. And some players, like if you're into this stuff, you know, Axfex, Helix, all this stuff, Helix is just really easy. And I, and I will admit of all the ones I've tried, the Helix was definitely the most streamlined, very easy easy to use, very good, but the Line 6 Pod Go is more for the average player, maybe a beginner to effects processors, but also somebody who's looking for more advanced things. So keep in mind, they, there's some of the traits of the, of the pedal that I thought were cool was instead of talking about like what amps it simulates, it talks about what songs it's simulating to say, hey, you want a Jimi Hendrix sound versus like a vintage Marshall, Marshall sound. So very cool. Also, it's a much friendlier price point at 450 and that's street price. Uh, it's just nice to see Line 6 get back into the heart of their affordable category again. Believe it or not, some of the effects are from the Helix lineup, so it still has a lot of quality. Um, I'm hoping to check one of those out and review those on the channel. Another thing I was super excited about was the MXR DD25 V2, the Dookie Drive pedal. Two, uh, I'm a huge uh, Green Day fan, and so I'm, I'm excited about this pedal. I'm hoping to get my hands on one. Uh, I wasn't able to try one at the show, but of course I was excited about it when I saw it. The John Mayer Silver Sky uh, Maple Board uh, with Gig Bag. Now this guitar came in two beautiful colors. This rose color, I kept seeing this color over and over again throughout the show in a lot of brands. Now the blue is really impressive. Both are great colors, but the blue one really kind of it sucked me in. Now I have a Silver Sky with a Rosewood fretboard and uh, a lot of people already asked me, uh, friends, hey, what do you think of the maple one? I think if you want a maple board, uh, I think that's the guitar for you. I'm more of a Rosewood player. I like the Rosewood boards more. Of course, since we're talking about colors and cool stuff, the Fender Limited Edition, this is the only thing I didn't like was hearing the word Limited Edition, uh, HM Strats with the Rosewood and they have a maple board. Uh, of course, those old colors, 1200 bucks, not too crazy considering, you know, the used ones float close to that now or more than that sometimes, and definitely not in perfect condition. However, something to note uh, is that uh, they are limited. So you'd have to make sure you get one pretty quick. Another thing I was super excited to see was the JHS Paul Gilbert PG-14. I watched the video from JHS and I was already stoked. I'm a Paul Gilbert fan. In fact, uh, I have one of the uh, Paul Gilbert Detox EQ pedals. They don't make this anymore from Homebrew. Homebrew went out of business, but this is a great pedal. I'm a Paul Gilbert fan, of course, and uh, I, I think he's got a great ear. So I know the pedal 
is gonna sound great. Now, another really cool thing, of course, I thought that was a hit at the show was the Orange Terra Stomp Valve Hybrid. Of course, we know it's just a, uh, the Tiny Terra put into a pedal, which makes more sense. It just makes more sense to have it on your pedal board. Uh, a lot of players were using the Tiny Terras as pedal platforms. 199 makes sense, 20 watts. Now back to Fender stuff that I thought was really cool was the Fender Players Lead 3. I put that, I don't know why I wrote that Lead 3. Um, I think it's just called the Lead, but maybe it's called 3. Uh, and uh, this is another guitar like the uh, HM Strat that they brought back. It was supposed to be from the uh, 80s. I, 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 didn't, I just put 80s on the notes. But anyways, the important part is I don't remember this guitar. <laughs> so uh, it's cool looking. In fact, when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is cool. They come up with something new. In fact, I think a lot of us thought that. I looked at that guitar. That wasn't something I remembered. I've never even seen one used. To see this, I thought something new, but it was something old, which is cool because it's now again new. Next, we're going to talk about the Charvel Pro Mod SoCal. This is the HS and Vintage White. Now, again, I like this because I really like Charvels, and I think a lot of us do. And I kind of like when Charvels move their looks a little bit more towards the, uh, the Fender style because I think of Charvels as the Super Strat. You know, it's the Strat on steroids. Now, as you guys know, I'm a Strat fan, so of course I like the Schechter Nick Johnson, the HSS Strats. I, I love them because they look like Sirs. They kind of feel like a Sir. Uh, at $800, uh, it's it's in a price point that's more tolerable than three thousand dollars they feel great uh Schecter does great stuff whether it's out of the korean factory or the indonesian factory Schecter always nails quality for me i've said that uh, a million times oh, that when i think of Schecter, i always think of quality very rarely do i find bad Schecters, and i've always attributed that to Schecter's amazing ability to qa their own product they've they've been so stringent about what defective product makes it out to the streets and um and i think when you do an import line where you're going to do a lot of product I think QA is what makes or breaks a company like that because as you ramp up scale, you're gonna have defective product. So you're able to filter it out and Schechter's always done a good job. Um, you'll always see in the comments down below, very few of you are ever say anything contrary to that. Sure, there's always gonna be somebody, but the majority of you will agree with me great product. I've worked on and put my hands on so many Schecters, I feel confident saying that. As you guys know, I'm a Katana fan and I like the Yamaha THR10, but there's now a THR10 II, and this is important. Some of you guys actually told me about this, so I made sure to look at it. I appreciate you guys doing that for me. The one I played was 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 really impressive. Another thing for us pedal geeks I thought was really cool, the Timmy Overdrive by MXR. And this is something that we keep seeing, you know what I mean, these collaborations when we saw uh, Josh Scott with Boss, you know what I mean, you see these collabs. I I think this is a great idea. Take a take a small builder and have them collab with a mass big builder, mass produced big builder. Obviously, Tim the Timmy Overdrive is a great pedal. I have one in my rack, and the idea that they made it a mini on top of that. And then this is the last stop for the EVH fans out there: the 5153 6L6 Stealth. It's for the guy who wants more gain or gal that wants more gain than what the 5150 has. It's really sick. It's a great amp. I've, uh, I put my, the 5150 is one of my favorite amps of the decade. And of course this amp is in that vein. So I thought I would mention it. Some notes on some interesting stuff and not stuff I got to try was the Fender Mustang LT50. Uh, and there's a bunch of other Mustangs from Fender, the Must, uh, Mustang GTX 50, GTX 100. These are going to be replacing the current series of Mustang amps. Another cool guitar that I found at the, at the show that I was really impressed with was the Gretsch G2210 Streamliner. And on my notes right here, it says under $300, which really means $300. What's great about it is you're getting a Gretsch, you're getting it for 300 bucks. That puts it in those uh, off-brand prices, to be honest with you. Very streamlined. Uh, I love the crazy colors. I thought the grayish blue with the green. I love that they're doing these kind of retro-y, kind of weird colors. Um, on the Jackson front, they did the Pro Dinky uh, Ash Ebony neck with this green. What I liked about it was it's not really an 80s look. It's kind of like a 80s now look. Another one I thought in the Gibson era was pretty cool. The Gibson 70s Explorer Classic White uh, was fantastic. It was good looking. I love it, right? You can't you can't hate that. When I think of the Explorer or the V, I think of the white ones. Another product that was interesting but not available now is the Neural DSP. It was a big, big 
you know, kind of like show something to talk about. It's a processor that's got uh, claims that has more processing speed than ever before. It's a better product than ever before. I think it hits the market in July, so it's not currently available. A really cool form factor, smaller, a lot of things I like about it. I talked to those guys. I think they're gonna make sure I have one in July to review. So if that happens, obviously I'll do it. Okay, so from Ibanez, there's a couple models that I was impressed with. Of course, the Pia by Steve I. I did an interview with Steve I. That video will be out later where we go through that guitar and his new Synergy module. Uh, there's also the Ibanez RGA 42 HP, which I jokingly like to call the Hinning Poly. Uh, some of people took that really serious in that last video, and I'm glad you did because... I don't know, I like it when my sarcasm doesn't land. Reminds me of the Ibanez Maxis. I've done a video about the Ibanez Maxis. Had that vibe, as soon as I saw it, it kind of brought me back to that look, that vibe. So I really dug the guitar. And this leads me to my favorite Ibanez in the entire show, the Yvette Young uh, Tallman. And I, I'm probably not saying any of this right. Uh, let's see if I have it. This model doesn't say Tallman, but it looks like it. It just says Yvette Young Signature. To me, it looks like the Tolman. It's in this amazing green glitter. It really popped to me. The guitar was cool. When I picked up the neck, it felt right. The guitar sounded great. It had a, just a resonant sound to it. Very cool guitar. And I hope I get to uh, check one out on the channel. Of course, the next was the Paul Reed Smith S2 McCarty 594. And of course, a single cut, a double cut, and then the thin line. Thin line just means mahogany, no maple cap, and it's slightly thinner. That's something I will be reviewing on the channel. So I got to stop by the Victory booth and check out some of the Victory uh, amps. And the Victory amp that kind of popped with me was the new Copper Deluxe. And as you guys know, I reviewed a bunch of uh, Victory amps in the past. On the acoustic front, Breedlove released a ton of acoustics, and I'm a Breedlove love fan. It was nice to see a ton of affordable acoustics. They had the Organic Signature Concert CE. I'm going to highlight that one right now. At 550 it played great. It looked great. It was a guitar that kind of struck you as a more expensive looking and sounding guitar, so that was nice to see. There was a lot of stuff from ESP LTD, so it was impressive. Uh, they had their 80s throwback uh, line that was cool, but I really like the ESP LTD Deluxe Phoenix. Uh, again, if you're looking for that body shape, uh, it, I love the colors that they picked. They sounded great. They felt great. That's really what it's about. It's the necks. And one thing, I, you, sometimes you don't get to plug in stuff in the damn show, but at least you get to feel the neck and get a vibe for that. And of course, the headless basses from Ibanez. I think that was really what stole the show at the booth at Ibanez. I was able to check them out. I was really impressed. Now, I've talked about this many times. On the Friedman front, they had the Twin Sister, which is a two-channel, two-independent channel, Dirty Shirley. Uh, I think that's smart. And of course, it has a lot of other features. So I see that is probably one of my favorite amps of the show. Although, I should really point out that the Tone King amps really blew me away. And the Morgan amps also blew me away when I was at the Boutique's booth. So very impressed with those line of amps as well. So that was really cool to see. Friedman also came out with a 212 slant cabinet. So as you guys know, I love 212 slant cabinets. So it was cool to see them come out with a cabinet. It's something I never really see. You don't see a whole lot of that cabinet. So on the accessories, what I noticed was they came out with some cool stuff. Black Mountain Thumb Pick, which I thought was cool. This is a thumb pick on a spring. Look at that. So you know how you have different sizes? This one has a spring. So as you put your thumb in there, look at that. It just, it just fits perfectly. Another thing I thought was cool as an accessory was the Nux or the New X. I'm gonna say Nux. Nux Bumblebee large pedal board with bag. I love the two tier idea. I thought that was really cool. And last but not least, I really enjoyed the Reverend guitar booth and the uh, Dane Electro booth. Those were two interesting guitars that, again, you don't get to see too often, so it was nice checking out the booth. There was so much stuff this year, it was just impossible to see it all and try it all. That's just some of the stuff I just wanted to recap. I put some links down below so you guys can find access to this information, get more information about those products. And also, I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, especially it was a great NAM. I hope you guys that weren't at NAM got to see a lot of it on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for your time and know your gear.